What's up, everybody? All right. I'm Jonathan the Baptist, and today I want to talk about a new podcast that I've been watching recently uh, called Haunted Cosmos. Um, and, uh, man, it's, is it good? Um, they, they talk about strange occurrences that have happened throughout history and uh, as like from like ghosts and sea monsters to uh, aliens, men in black, um, all sorts of different stuff, all sorts of different stuff. And uh, they just talk about how to how how to explain it from a Christian worldview. And uh, really with the the goal, I think, of presenting a Christian worldview uh, to a people who have grown up in a materialistic world. And by materialistic, I don't mean they want to buy stuff. Like, people who buy stuff. By materialistic, I mean people who believe that the material, the physical, is all there is. And so... In the Western world these days, we're in a materialistic worldview. That's our culture, where the physical is all that there is. And so, all these like weird like paranormal things or metaphysical things ha are happening. And we don't really have like an explanation for it because we have these physical explanations. We want to rationalize everything to be the physical. Excuse me. And so what this podcast is talking about is all these like weird connections between these uh, strange occurrences that happen um, and like interpreting it through the Christian worldview to really to help uh, equip people. So anyways, really love it. It's great. Um, I've, uh, I've long been interested in like the paranormal and stuff. I've never investigated myself because... As a Christian, I know that it's basically, you know, very demonic. So I have, I want to have nothing to do with it. But I've always been intrigued in that, like, kind of like how Lewis, you know, uses the screw tape letters to kind of give the Christian, like, an insight to how the demonic works, to this spiritual war that's going on around us that we can't see. And so. They, uh, um, so so I, so I watch have watched you know watched a lot of paranormal stuff uh, throughout the years, and of course you've got to be very careful with that. So, like, because especially nowadays where everyone wants to do seances and everybody wants to do like Ouija boards and stuff, just don't, <laughs> just stay away from that. Um, but uh, yeah, so like, how do you how do we like kind of glimpse and how like our enemy is trying to uh to manipulate us and uh and that's uh can be helpful obviously um it's uh, very dangerous but really i think that more and more we're devolving from as a culture devolving from the materialistic into a very openly pagan uh worldview and so like um New Age is on the rise. Uh, I think Christianity, we see this like leftist cult that has been forming, and I think a lot of that it has a lot of strong demonic ties. And, uh, and so it's, it's a lot more obvious, but like which uh, people who like are involved in like Wiccan and witchcraft, like that is like on the rise in, in our country. And, uh, and so I think that, you know, in 50 years, the landscape of America is going to be very different. And I think Christians need to be ready for what's coming. And that is uh, basically a spiritual battle <laughs> where we, we grew up in this, like, you know, uh, physical-minded world. And then we're going to... Compl like the culture is just going to be completely shifted to a super spiritual one so could be wrong about that but that's my thought one of my thoughts 
So I appreciate what they're doing over there to talk about that. But I wanted to talk about a few things. Um, uh, one, one of the one problem, and, and I like I love the podcast right now. It's my fa- it's it's my favorite podcast that I listen to right now. Uh, even though they've only had like four episodes. Um, one of the things that they've they they talk about um, is there's in the first episode and the fourth episode, which is the first and the the last one that they've um, published. They reference some things in the Bible, uh, just some weird translations. So in the first one, it's about sea serpents, and what they're talking about is like. Um, the the word that's used for serpent in uh, Genesis when Moses turns his staff into a snake or a serpent that it's the same name of a pagan deity that was believed to be a six headed uh, dragon and I'm and here's what I'd say I think that that's odd (laughs) it's weird but i don't know that it's meant for us to like interpret moses as like cast uh, turning his staff into a six-headed dragon or six-headed serpent i don't think that's like what we're supposed to do in in that passage and i don't know that they would argue that either but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know for sure. So I, I feel like that's a little bit of a stretch. Um, but it is interesting that that word is used. I also do think that um, the uh, magicians, if you will, or the you know the guys that there were actually able to turn their staffs also into serpents. Uh, I don't think that. Um, that they were like phony magicians. I think that they actually had power that was given to them through the demonic. So I agree with them with that. Completely agree with that. But I just, I think it's interesting to note that the word in the Old Testament, uh, or in that specific uh, passage, I don't know if it's like always the word for serpent. Although that's pretty interesting, uh, especially since we have the serpent in, in uh, Genesis. But I don't know. It's just I don't want to read too much into that into them using the same word. And similarly, I have this one pulled up because I, I feel like I'll under uh, can point it out a little better. Um, I did not do this beforehand, so I apologize. Here we go. All right. So this is from. KJV today never never heard of this uh, website, but they were talking about this. So in Isaiah 50, uh, 34, 14, there's this word, which is I think it's lilith, um, is how it would be said, or lilith. They're adding the H. I don't think there's an H in, in Hebrew, so it would be lilith. Here it is, um, and so the the word means. Uh, I think is best understood as as an owl, um, especially since like um, like it's it's listed amongst a bunch of other animals, and interestingly, like um, there's another channel that I really like. It's called uh, Expedition Bible, and he goes to the modern day land of Babylon. Uh, which is, I think, where this uh, prophecy is being uh, about, the destruction of Babylon, which at the time, Babylon's like this enormous city. Um, and uh, like they've got the temple of whatever, I forget the, the, the god that they worship. They have this great temple. It's one of the, uh, the ancient wonders of the world. And like it's just a massive city. And... Uh, it, it, it would be kind of like if Isaiah were living today, like calling out, I don't know, New York City and saying, like, you're going to be devastated and uh, that, like, where people live now, the uh, there's going to be, like, wild animals living there. 
and uh, that's basically where what's there now. Like you have a bunch of owls and like um, oh, where are some of the other animals there? Uh, jackals. Like you just you go there. There's no buildings, no people live there. Just a bunch of wild animals live there, and it's a fulfillment of the prophecy here. And so I feel like translating it as an a animal or sorry an owl is a better translation uh, because the the context definitely has a bunch of listed animals now that's not to say that this Lilith doesn't have like an older meaning of like a knight creature um, that was just later uh, an, a certain owl, a screech owl, was was called uh, named after it. And then this night, what we would call like this screech owl, there, it doesn't mean that like there's this older word that uh, the uh, ancient Israel called this owl after this like you know creature that there wasn't this demon. Um. So, I, I'm not opposed to that. So, a lot of the, like, Hebrew demonology that comes after Christ, so, like, this idea of Lilith doesn't occur until after after Jesus. So, it's definitely not Old Testament. Um, and it's kind of, like, it's weird. Like, people talk about, like, the, the, the Mishnah and the Talmud as if it's, like... Uh, <laughs> Uh, scripture, and I know that uh, modern Jews believe that, but um, the uh, Talmud, like I think it's uh, um, the Mishnah, is like a bunch of guys, um, th their religious leaders, like their interpretations on the Pentateuch, and then the Talmud is like the interpretations of the interpretations of the Pentateuch, or something like that. So it's like very far removed, and like if you look through the Gospels, because I think it was the Mishnah, if I'm not mistaken, that's being written during the time of Christ, and so like some of these ant questions that are that appear in the Mishnah are being asked of Jesus, because there's like this political divide among the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and so they ask Jesus this question to see like which side he's on, and Jesus is like I ain't I ain't on your side, I'm on God's side because uh you've rejected me you've rejected the messiah and so um just a lot of stuff going on anyways so this little thing uh idea uh tied to isaiah doesn't come until after i don't think isaiah had any any hint of uh m meaning for this to be this night monster or this demon so I think that I, I, I don't want to say that that's what the uh, haunted cosmos guys are doing because um, again I love I love what they're doing right now um, I just feel like I, I feel like it's an interesting note to, to add to the conversation hey there's this character that like is, uh, we have this word that is later interpreted by uh, um, by later Jews who have rejected the Messiah, and so we know that this is definitely demonic, <laughs> you know, in nature. Um, and so, like, I, I'm okay with that interpretation. What I don't want to say is like we shouldn't translate. I don't. They didn't say this, but it seemed like they were saying we shouldn't translate it owl, a night owl, or screech owl. But we should translate it as like this night monster, demon Lilith, or whatever. I don't think that's the case. I don't, that's it doesn't fit the context in Isaiah, and so so there, there's that. Now, last thing, because again, I mean, I'll probably talk about all this this uh, podcast a lot because I'm really enjoying it. They did this this uh, la latest episode on sleep paralysis, and. Um, I didn't realize when I started talking to my friends about this that uh, 
there's a lot of people who have sleep paralysis that is not like super clearly demonic in nature um and uh because me having like watched a lot of paranormal like tv shows and whatnot and like followed people who like are are doing paranormal stuff like i knew i knew like what they were talking about was definitely demons like it was, it was super obvious um but but a lot of these people who like get into this occultic stuff they experience sleep paralysis and some of them are like trying to get it like it's not this unusual thing and uh, which is like so stupid like please don't do that christian please non-christian don't do this like don't seek out demons they're not nice uh, which sidebar um one of the things that gets me about like all these paranormal shows and stuff is they just believe everything anything tells them i'm like you have no like rational reason to believe believe something just because something metaphysical tells it to you like it tells you it's a an alien from another dimension like you have no way of knowing that that's true like how do you know like what they tell you like this information that maybe nobody else knew or they tell you something about the uh, past and they claim to be this past person i'm like you have no way of knowing that that's true like you can't just believe that, that, that that's true you don't know that you're talking to a ghost of somebody like i think a better explanation is you're talking to a demon like <laughs> let's be real here we, uh, you know christians have had the answer for this for a long time anyways um sidebar over <laughs> um so I've talked to a number of people since mentioning this uh, series about sleep paralysis. And I didn't realize that there's a whole group of people who experience this, but don't experience like shadow people holding them down. And just thank the Lord, I've never experienced this at all. <laughs> like I've woken up and my arm was like uh, numb or like my hands because I was sleeping on it wrong. I've never like had it, like woken up and like not been able to move. That's just like super creepy. Like praise the Lord that He has protected me from <laughs> from that kind of attack, and I pray that He has not you know won't do that anymore. But I didn't realize that uh, there was this whole group of people who who had it, but without the the shadow people, because I've only ever heard it with people who are like in the paranormal or like a cultic setting and it's very very obvious um that it's demonic and so um so i wish they had gotten into that a little bit they 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 kind of briefly mentioned that i think some um some people like uh, medical people or whatever say that it's uh, some kind of like neutrons firing in your brain or something like that. I've never heard that. I've heard the excuse that it's like trauma. <laughs> that uh, they just think that this uh, that's more of a psychological uh, argument that, oh, well, you got this uh, mental problem. And, uh, well, it's obviously trauma. <laughs> um, yeah, because everything's trauma, you know. Um, but then like this other explanation is that you have like these neurons misfiring and it forgets to wake up your body or something and i'm just like that sounds just about as likely as trauma to me it sounds like demons to me um and maybe they just don't uh make themselves uh, uh noticeable in every situation i don't know i don't know let me know what you think but um i think that I would have liked a more, uh, more in-depth discussion about it, um, especially because I feel like we have two choices. Like, you know, there's a physical problem that uh, the demons are co-opting, or there isn't a physical problem and it's only demons. And in which case, I think we need to like have people who like experience sleep paralysis regularly, but without the the uh, the obvious demons they should try to like call out uh the name of christ and sit like 
Obviously, I think this will only work for Christians, but maybe not. I don't know. I've heard unbelievers say that calling out Jesus' name works. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but for like, if Christians call out in the name of Christ, and uh, and like, and and it helps, then maybe it isn't uh, just a a physical thing. Um, obviously, I think the ones where it's very obvious demons. It's definitely demons and not physical but there is this like other category that I did not know about until very very like this last week of people who um, experience sleep paralysis but without like seeing things hold holding them down so like there's there's this guy I work with he's a strong Christian great guy he just thought that that sleep paralysis was a normal thing and he had never heard of it as a demonic thing before and he has experienced it before uh, but he never has never seen any like any figures like holding him down or anything so so what is that is that demonic is that a demonic oppression and they just have chosen not to show themselves i don't know um i think we need to use the scientific method and, and find out like hey, you should try calling on the name of Christ and seeing if that releases you or if it's just a physical ailment or, or trauma. <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of psychology, modern psychology. Um, it's just, yeah, their answer for everything is trauma. I'm not saying trauma doesn't happen and it doesn't cause problems. I'm just saying, like, it's not the problem for everything. Anywho, so they did talk about like the the hat man which was really interesting but i felt like he could have deserved like a whole episode himself um but uh yeah keep doing what you're doing really enjoy it just some creepy stuff um which isn't for everybody i wouldn't recommend listening to it at night <laughs> by yourself um and and i would also say if you're a Christian, you should probably be praying while you listen to this stuff. Because um, there's a world, there's a spiritual battle going on all around us all the time that we have no knowledge of, no like concept of. And if it weren't for the Bible, we wouldn't even know it, it was happening. And so, when you start wading into this, like, I'm not saying things will start happening, because things haven't happened to me that didn't happen before, but, uh, um, like, I've never had any, like, actual, like, paranormal experiences, and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to see an angel, I don't want to see a demon, until christ returns and sets all things in order i'm, I'm fine I, but i do like thinking about like what's what's what and um yeah i mean I've, I've heard so many stories from missionaries about like demonic activity and it is terrifying and so like as somebody who wants to go overseas you know and and you know be a part of of you know missions works overseas like that's one of the reasons why I get active in this because I want to know, like, I want to be prepared, not you know, mentally and spiritually for the warfare that's a lot more obvious in more pagan nations. So, just be aware. I think the day's coming where uh, our country will probably be very pagan and. I think the demonic activity will be a lot more obvious to us, um, and so, and, and I think, I think that day's already come. I think that we have become a pagan nation, and I think that the demonic activity is already super obvious. And so, as a Christian, you got to be aware of that. So, those are my thoughts on Haunted Cosmos. Uh, great, great channel. Uh, podcast go check them out there I, I know they're on youtube i know they're on spotify uh they might be on apple or what is it uh apple podcast ipodcast whatever that app is on apple i don't know 
Um, they may be on that one too. I don't remember. I know they're on Spotify because that's where I listen to them. But, uh, and they're on YouTube because that's how I share it with people. <laughs> YouTube's so much easier to share than Spotify, in my opinion. Anywho, let me know what you think. Have you listened to them yet? Um, again, I'm, I, I don't mean this, this video as an attack on those guys. I love their, their work. Um, I'm more knowledgeable about the Bible than I am about all the stuff that they, the other stuff they talk about. And I do like have some inkling of the paranormal because that's just, you know, something that I've studied over the years. Uh, I think having a good like demonology, theology of demons is, 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 uh, very wise for the Christian to know, to know what's going on. Um, so yeah, so I don't mean it as an attack, just, yeah, you know, I I want I want to make sure we're clear. Like some of these things are not. I don't think that they're actually like meant to be interpreted the way they seem to be interpreting. If that's not what they mean, I'm sorry. It's just I wasn't 100 percent clear when you when you were saying them. And I just want to like little push back and say like it's not that these ideas aren't tied to the terms that you're talking about in the Bible, but in those uh, in those passages, I don't think it's meant in the same way that you're interpreting it. So there's my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. If you uh, enjoy that video, leave us a like. If there's any topic you want me to talk about, or like if you uh, have any comments or complaints or snide remarks, let me know. <laughs> Write that in the comments, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.